Hey guys, what is going on? Rematch here, and welcome back to another episode of Cards TV Commentary. Now, to be quite honest, I have an interesting lineup of matches for you guys, and I'm really excited to get into this. So, uh, with that being said, we're just going to jump right in and take you guys to match number one. Uh, you know, because not that much of an introduction, so let's hop right into it. Alright, and our first match is going to be uh, 92 Ham against Call Me Blank. Of course, Crusader Warlock going up against the Pirate Warlock, So, which is the dominant support for Warlock is the true question here. Call starting off with a Lumberjack. 92 going to respond with an Earth Knight. Pretty strong opening, seeing as how that Earth Knight really can't be touched, but mugging actually going to face right to that Earth Knight. Uh, big weakness of armor right there. Uh, the debuffs, you know, mugging, disable can instantly kind of destroy low health armor units like that. Um, 92 respond to the Knight of Flowers for uh, prompting Call to retreat, setting up an altar and Ship of the Damned as well, so we can assume some kind of undead deck will be in the works here uh, for Call. 92, probably more on the Knight side, as you can see by the stables he just played there, giving that Knight of Flowers a little extra oomph. And of course, the armor going to be able to successfully defend against these uh, skeletal pirates, but Call not opting to do so, instead taking it easy, summoning a Banshee in the back, prompting his Lumberjack to kind of take the hit, which it does. Uh, call getting the extra card out of it. Blue Firebolt on the altar, kind of cut off his undead support there. And he can roll up another Earth Knight as well to five, thanks to that, you know, additional armor and attack from the stables. Benji can go ahead and see if she can chop down the Earth Knight a little bit there. We see Disintegrate finishing off the flower. Uh, interesting call there. Inspire, gonna get Guards and Berserker. Guards are a good pull. Um, Berserker, eh, you kind of have to get the face for it to be that useful. But what will 92 do here? He'll throw out a Lumberjack. Will he follow up with a Horseman is the question of the day. Uh... Okay, well, he's going to chop down. Okay, so he will follow up with at least one horseman to kill off the back skeletal pirate after letting his Earth Knight chop down uh, the first one, leaving Cole with just a zombie on the board. But now he's going to use his uh, Hassan City Guard here, going to try and chop down the Earth Knight, which I assume he's trading everything in. So he does, leaving just a 4 2 horseman kind of just sitting there in the back. 92 might make it. Uh, no, he's going to go for the Horseman. He's going to try and snipe the altar, which he doesn't really get. And Disintegrate not going to be a useful tool here to get rid of the altar since it can't target buildings. So, Call's in an interesting position here. I mean, I wouldn't say he's down and out yet, but we see he's trying to summon uh, some Skeletal Pirates again. He really needs buffs to really make these undead units actually kind of go to Like, it can he needs those, yeah, he needs global buffs like the Armory Witch 92 just played to just make these uh, little tokens more useful. Because right now... These units lost no health thanks to the fact that armor is a thing. Um, and we see he just, it allows his forces to advance so heavily. Uh, Keeper gonna get a little buff from Fat Bar. I think that was a little uh, needed. Wraith gonna push back that, what is that, is that a question knight or a paladin? Question knight. Uh, no one really runs Paladin, right? Uh, Horseman going to chop down five off of Blank's Castle, followed up by Illuminaris to board clear, basically. So that was a big, big uh, turn for 92. Uh, Call going to respond with a Mordok. Mordok going to chop away the Horseman, or at least trade with it, summoning a Banshee, which he needed to do to kind of... I mean, anything but the Wraith, I think, would have helped him there. And then a Dragon Search for good measure, getting him a Fire Drake as well. 92, not really in a good position though to respond. He has no units to push, so Stable is going to be the card to throw down. Uh, call at 10 gold. How does he handle this? Eternal Darkness. And I, I think that's over. He actually spawn blocks him. Yep, there you go. So, Call actually, he made a good turnaround here, because now, no matter what 92 Ham does, I mean, he can, you know, clear off some of these units here. We see Blue Fire and Disintegrate, but he's got no units to follow up with, so. And there's a Rakanoth to kind of put the punishment on, destroying all of the buildings and continuing to push that spawn block. Uh, we see four, we see two, uh, yep, so... At this point, 92 needs, you know, something swordsman to help him out here, but he draws another armory, so that looks like it's going to be the game. Uh, a very good turnaround for Call Me Blank. Um, I mean, he was down most of the game, but I think the lack of units on 92's hand, uh, you know, it kind of just ended up winning uh, Call the game. Overall, though, a great match. Uh, shows why Eternal Darkness and Storm in general is still slightly viable. I really think it is one of those untapped decks, at least for now, uh, that we might see more of later. But anyway, great match to start us off. So go ahead, move right into match number two. 
From there, I'm going to go with Tyrannus versus Bear Claw. Hopefully, uh, it's fine that I don't you know, add the additional numbers just for simplicity's sake. Bear Claw looking like he's running Dragons. Tyrannus, I can't really tell right now based on the Lumberjack play. Uh, but we'll see how Bear Claw responds to that. He's got a Faithful Drake, which he will play. Opt for some defense here rather than setting up with a Dragon's Temple. I think he might just bring that in later. Uh, Tyrannus opting for a Faithful Drake as well. So potentially both Dragons here. We never know. We never know. Uh, Dragon Temple going to be the play for Bear Claw here. Setting up a little defensively here. Not really going to push in all too heavily. Tyran is actually doing the same, followed up with a Dragon Search, though, getting him a Fire Drake for what I assume is the next turn play. Um, Shadow Drake coming out from Bear Claw, now he's 6'6", six, six, thanks to the uh, Dragon Search buff and Dragon Temple buff, yeah. Oh, that Lich is going to expose the Shadow Drake. Uh, will he go after it is the question. I mean, he might, he might not. We see the Faithful Drake opting to move away, the Lich looking like it's going to kill off that Faithful Drake maybe later. Uh, but we see the green drake from Bear Claw going to be finishing off the faithful drake up top there. Uh, Tyrannus, we know he still has that fire drake. Will he opt to play it now? He will. So that's going to go ahead and weaken his or weaken the opponent's board. We see Bear Claw opting to sacrifice the lich in favor of getting rid of that green drake, which allows Bear Claw to open up with a couple attacks on his own. Uh, he will opt to kill the fire drake and then take six off the. Uh, castle instead meanwhile the stone drake moves up ever so closer not really pushing too heavily uh we see another fire drake another dragon temple trying to clear off some of what he uh what tyrannus has or no what bear claw has excuse me wrong terminology there uh, dragon search coming out for bear claw plus wotan wotan's gonna be finishing off that fire drake meanwhile stone drake gonna take six off the castle tyrannus in a tricky spot here wotan does you know his deflect and first strike make him a difficult unit to counteract We'll see if he can... Alright, he can't. So, overall, i say that was a decent Dragon vs. Dragon matchup. Um, you know, Bear Claw bringing out the Wotan, something you don't see too often. And like I was trying to say before, the Deflect and First Strike of Wotan make him a difficult unit to get rid of. You can't really hit him with spells, and you need something that just basically survives his First Strike. Um, Wotan, you know, again, basically kind of fills the weakness that first strike units normally have, in which case they are vulnerable to small spells, disintegrate, blue fire, deflective, uh, defective, etc. But with deflect, it's harder to use those spells because you can't really counteract Wotan. You just need something to trade head on into Wotan. And if Wotan gets too big, too fast, then your game might be pretty much over unless you have some kind of, um, area of effect, you know, cards like Flamestorm or Blaze that don't really require a specific target, or, you know, Blaze does require a target, but, like, you can hit a unit next to Wotan, and Wotan will still, etc, etc, so, with that being said, a decent Dragon vs. Dragon matchup there, congratulations to Bearclaw for winning that matchup, but now let's move into the final matchup. Now, a little context before we actually hop into this matchup, as you can see, I've already seen the matchup based upon the grayed out, um, area that around the match um and this really is what inspired me at least for today to make this video after seeing this matchup because my god was this a fun match to watch and i've been kind of following uh sean or at least i hope it's okay if i just break his name into sean uh, i've been watching him for i think most of the day at least today he's been running this interesting interesting deck build that uh i find hilarious and i might try myself uh given the opportunity i mean i probably i could probably build it but you know it'd be better if i had the list etc etc but anyway i want to show you guys this matchup because i think this went so well for uh Sean here and it kind of also highlights one of the downsides with the dojo nerf that recently happened so let's go ahead let's jump right into it and you can see Sean's hand already looking very very odd guard tower eye of flame dwarven construction on holy altar um this is what I theorize to be a dwarven building deck which is very very unusual I've never really seen a deck like this but we'll kind of just you know, we'll, we'll play out the match right now and show you guys how it goes. So, I've already missed a couple of turns here, at least in the commentary portion. We see Guard Tower being thrown defensively to kind of take out some of these smaller units here. Unholy Altar being played as well to start generating some zombies for Sean. 
Uh, Z opts to play his guards, or at least hopefully, is, is, hopefully it's alright if I call him Z. Uh, but Z moves in with some guards, followed up by the Flux. Uh, Sean, how is he going to respond? He got the, he does have the zombie. Guard going to opt to take out the, uh, well, guard tower opting to take out the Hassan City guard on face. Meanwhile, a sniper being summoned to hopefully take out the Flux. Flux is forced to kind of come in. He, you know, Z doesn't really see any other options here to protect his Flux. And he does have another one anyway, so he's not too sad about losing that first Flux it seems so sean gonna opt to use a zombie flux comp or guard tower zombie combination take out the flux leaving the sniper to eliminate the guard that's currently trying to push him and then Tarius being summoned as well so you know sean's i think deck opts to take out a lot of things that are just offense you know that are coming in it doesn't really matter if he's taking the war you know, minor end of the trades here. As long as he gets things off his face, I think that's what he wants to do. At least when the matches open up, it seems. So, Forbidden Scroll gonna bounce a Flux back. Uh, Flux and Salahar Soul, or Brighter, excuse me, moving in as well. Uh, let's see, Sean responds with taking the Sniper to the Rider, exposing that Sniper to the Flux, of course. Of course, Zombie being killed in the process, thanks to Salahar's last will. We see another Altar being played down, as well as a Dwarf Paladin to kind of block for that uh, Flux that's coming in. Uh, we'll see how Z responds with a he'll, okay multi strike, which is okay a multi strike and Icon combination will be able to take out at least one of these range units. It'll be interesting to see which one he goes for. Uh, spoiler: He goes for the sniper after playing Sacred Quest, which in my opinion, you know, I get it. It's you know a bigger attack, but with Tarius, you're allowing him to get more draw. It was a it was a uh, a rough choice there for sure. Uh, we see Zombie being traded and uh, Tarius finishing it off. Very nice. Dwarf Miner, uh, which allows him to start playing Mithril, so all of those units now getting some extra health. Uh, he opts not to hold the Dwarf, or he holds the Dwarf in construction for now because he knows he's got an Eye of Flame. Now this is interesting what Z does back here. He hibernates, or at least double hibernates, the Were Rat, which in my mind, I get it, he wants to start building up this big first strike unit, so that way none of these units can really touch him, none of these zombies or the Dwarven Miner would be able to get rid of him. Uh, but here's where we see, you know, Sean's deck really start to take uh, shape here. Dwarven Construction plus an Eye of Flame. You see how close that Eye of Flame is? It's sitting right on the face there, and he's got to do something about it. Hibernate on the Were Rat still blocks him off from using it. Uh, Lich attempting to freeze the eye, but doesn't really get to it. Dojo coming out now, and of course he plays a trap for draw, but that Dojo did take two gold out of the three he had, so he's forced to just play a Salahar Rider instead. And of course, slowly start chipping away at the, um, Eye of Flame. Uh, but Sean brilliantly counters the trap there that Z played. Secret Dragon, he shoots the Were Rat to take the buff. Uh, Tari is finishing off that Salahar Rider. Dwarf and Miner are going to finish off the Lich, freezing the Fire Drake so we can't use it. Playing another Eye of Flame, you know, below the uh, current Eye of Flame, you know, next to that Dwarf and Miner, which can still hit face, by the way. Uh, Eye of Flame is in range of face damage. And now Sean's got double Eye of Flame on Z's castle here. And we see Z. He's going to try and cycle with a Lumberjack, the Flux from earlier that he buffed, another trap going down, but still taking over half of his current gold. Uh, you know, at that point, it just doesn't really seem worth it. Thrill of victory, sacrifice, things he can't really use. Give the Shepherd to attempt to heal his castle. He gets only one heal off, though. The, uh, the dojo took the other two. And now, look at this. There's, there's, you know, 14 face damage from the eyes alone. Plus the miner coming in, chopping three off the castle. Dragon's Fire to finish off the Flux, and, you know, Altar as well for kicks. Uh, Dwarven Construction reinforcing those eyes even more. Tarius to threaten the last two damage, regardless of if uh, Sean clears off the castle or not, or, excuse me, clears off the uh, eyes. Uh, and it's kind of just over. We see uh, Z placing down a double dojo. Of course, now it's one gold per trap getting two cards, which is okay, but still, it's not enough. We see the eye continuing to survive, at least the first one. Well, now it's going to die thanks to a lunging attack. But there's still so much more on uh, Sean's side of the board that's going to end up rushing and killing him. The zombies, the dwarf miners, all of that good stuff. Uh, and yeah, this was a really, really fun match to watch, at least in my mind. Uh, because decks like these that Sean ran in this is, you know, really interesting to see how people can use uh, several buffs or nerfs uh, to their advantage. And we see him using the guard tower buff, we saw him with the eye of flame buff to create just this wacky, wacky deck, which, again, I'm really interested in trying. Uh, I don't know if I can get that exact list, but uh, I'm going to see if I can do my best, at least in, 
maybe to somewhat replicate it, I might be a few cards off. But that might be for a future video at another time. But, uh, yeah, overall, really, really fun deck. And something, again, that I personally enjoyed watching. And with that being said, guys, that's going to do it from me for now. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like, uh, share with your friend, of course, comment down below your thoughts on these matches, especially the Dwarven building deck. I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts regarding that, because, uh, again, that was a really, really fun match to watch and really highlights the fact that a lot of players just like to be creative sometimes. So that's, that's what it comes down to. So uh, with that being said, if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Help show your support to the channel by clicking that subscribe button at no additional cost to you. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be it for uh, that's gonna be it for me. So until next time, guys, stay gaming.